Hi guys, guys. Welcome, welcome to Shoot the Shot, shot with Shot for shot. shot. My name is Butter. My name is AJ. And I'm Kurt. And, and of course, we like to start every podcast off with a mandatory complimentary. You know what we do. We like to do the shot. Or something. Ooh, not as bad as I remember it. Yeah. Woo! Not okay. as bad as I remember it. Oh, well, it is. It is for me. So, AJ, this week we decided to go. Um, now, I, I don't really do this very often where uh, we get to, like go see an old movie in the theaters again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You've always seen like the roadhouse like side yeah. of the like, freeway like theaters that are like the indie ones. Uh, Come for $2 on. and see Rush Hour. Yeah, you know, know, like Field of Dreams or oh, like yeah, something fair. like okay. a good like, not like Rush Hour. <laughs> I don't know. Like, you know, <laughs> where you're like, I could definitely just watch that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Like, we're going to show Forrest Gump again. Yeah. Or Jaws. <laughs> Jaws 2, The Revenge. Jaws is a little bit above. But go on. Yeah, come, digress. Or Biodome. What if the, you can see a dollar to see Biodome. Yeah. I'll whistle. So, okay, so this week we saw uh, Fifth Element had their big 20th anniversary uh, screening in theaters. Uh, we got to see uh, a real quick shot of Valerian. Yes. Um, but it was a half hour. Half hour, actually. Not you know. a movie. Uh, half hour. Not a movie. Of, okay. But it was a half but, but hour of, special of like the whole story of how Valerian came about. Which, which was, was really cool. because like movie or like the story of Valerian? Both. Both, really. Because, um, again, I you know, as the comic guy, I really didn't know it was like a huge comic in the 90s. I think it was more of like a manga like comic Aeon like Flux epic. Style? Exactly. Well, wasn't Aeon Flux originally an anime? I th- on MTV. Never mind. That was a bad I think idea. it was, think it was, it was kind of co- like Attack on Titans. Like they came out maybe Yeah, at the same time. time you know? Don't quote me on that. Uh, uh, yeah, don't guess. quote us. <laughs> but again, it, it's, it was just cool to see like how he was so passionate about this movie that hasn't even come out yet. Um, uh, but like he really wanted to actually he really wanted to do this when he was doing Fifth Element yeah. like it was, that was I thought that was interesting sort of like his avatar yes yeah. and, and, you know coincidentally f- enough coincidentally enough he made a really interesting point a lot of movies today we really couldn't do unless Avatar came out Avatar no matter what people talk shit on it it paved the way for every mo- I, I don't care what people say about it that's right it has paved the way honestly for like motion capture for CGI like yeah. for these big epic like visual stories mm-hmm. yeah for sure Okay. Exactly. Yeah, but, but I would still, say Lord of the Rings like, as well. I think I, I would have definitely agree with Avatar. Lord, Avatar was the one that came after Lord of the Rings, but like, like had I full think, characters. I, I think I think those movies that were CGI. Their inspiration lasts for a span of like seven years. I think. Yeah. There was like there was um, Lord of the Rings. Avatar came out in like 2008, and then I'm sure we're going to get another one that's going to like progress. I guess it's going to be Avatar 2 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's going to be four movies well, like, like coming well, out back to back. But what we're saying is like that's what the director said. He said when he came out with the fifth element, uh, the the creator of Valerian was telling him like, why aren't you doing my comic? Yeah. Like, why aren't you doing that? And, he's, and pretty much he said the main reason was because the technology wasn't there and because of Avatar. Yeah. And this is what he said. Because of like the technology that came out from how they had to make Avatar is the only reason why now he can do Valerian. It was something he wanted to do. That that was like a second movie he wanted to do after Leon. And then he, I mean, he did lose The professional. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. And I guess like Lord of the Rings is practical effects and Avatar again, is CGI. Like effects. main not, characters. Not to like main... bash any other, any yeah. other, the art forms. I, I enjoy them both. Mm. But I would say, yeah, obviously Valyrian because it's more heavily um, yeah. handed on. The like CGI every character other than like the two mains, uh, uh, Clive Owen and Rihanna, every other character is either a robot or a, some alien species. Yeah, oh, and also the two main characters. Is it going to be... But is that going to be a problem for you guys if you see Valyrian? That I feel like uh, The Fifth Element is one of those movies that is kind of a lot of practical effects. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's going to be odd seeing his style in CGI. That's what I get what, from looking at the trailers. Yeah, well, I, no, see I totally the, get what you mean. I yeah. see the inspiration from The Fifth Element, and I see where he's coming from, but it's all like CGI. I would love to see practical effects yeah. rather than CGI in this case. It's like Star Wars, and then it, when we saw episode one. Yeah. Like, you, oh, yeah. They, like, they literally have a thing of George Lucas in front of all like, yeah. the Death Star and stuff, and then it shows him in front of episode one. It's just a green screen. And I'm sure it'd probably be so, weird the other way around, too. Like, yeah. if Avatar did practical effects, I'm sure that would also look odd because it's yeah. just yeah. not what what came before it yeah that, i mean there's a lot of costumes in it there's a lot of practical effects but like oh, certain yeah. things that they want yeah it's gonna be they, a big costume like, they'll have like big the full cosplay. armor but then again at the same time they'll have like the head is cgi because yeah. you can't really make a puppeteer out of that so um but he said i think he said there's over uh i think he said so uh, it, element had like 500 or 500 uh, yeah. different uh, uh cgi shots valerian has over two thousand different 
CGI shots. Yeah. Now again, yeah. that might be a lot. Visual, visual effects shots, yeah. yeah. Now again, that might be a lot, might be too much, but honestly, if yeah. it's a nice balance to where we aren't just seeing like fucking old Grand Moff Tarkin in CGI, you know. I mean, I actually liked, but so it was really great. or uh, Princess Leia, a lot of people didn't like. Like, you I would like really try. I, I, I okay. I, awesome. I liked the Princess Leia, and I actually really liked the one I really liked was Grand Moff Tarkin because it, it, it did. I didn't even notice it. Yeah. Leia clearly it was CGI at the end, but there was just something about Grand Moff Tarkin. It was like I was just like taken away. I was like, man, it really felt. Well, that's because Grand Moff Tarkin was an actor that they CGI'd over the face. Carrie Fisher who sounded she, just the did same. She, did Carrie Fisher film that part? I don't think so. I think it was no. her daughter. But again, I don't yeah. quote us. You don't quote us. I am. I am. I am. <laughs> okay. you, yeah, at least you owned I, up to it. I own that. Forgive me for not knowing what the actor's name is, but yeah, but like I mean, that actor, uh, actor he, he passed away. Billy. Billy Lord. Billy Lord. Passed away a while ago, so they got like somebody else who is like. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. no, no. Not Carrie Fisher. The, <laughs> not the guy who got Grandma Tarkin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, he, he passed away like a, twenty a years ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. So they just got somebody who looked like him. So I mean, they had to render everything else too. Yeah, but like I'm sure it's a lot easier job than like rendering from a picture than rendering from a, like video. Yeah, I mean, which is ironic because Carrie Fisher even. I I, I don't know ass, shit like, about CGI it. or anything like that, but I would assume. Yeah. Oh no! Don't case. count yourself short. Come on, Kurt. <laughs> Kurt is our leading CGI <laughs> expert here at Shoot the Shot. I, and I, yeah, thank, I thank own you. a computer. He, he owns the Mac. Hey, you know what? No, I, a PC. You own a computer I'm, too. I'm moving up there. Yeah. Moving up oh, there. moving on up. I want own a personal so what's computer. Up? So okay, here's. Oh, I want to keep because the yeah. one thing it was like seeing the fifth element. I never saw it in the movie theaters, and I've always seen it at home and. Seen it in 4K high resolution. Oh, yeah. It was amazing. I really but. wish they would do it more often. But <laughs> what was the but? When you see it in 4K high definition, because yeah, well, it just wasn't made. Let me finish. Let me yeah. finish. In 1997, when it came out, it was definitely not shot in 4K. So when you see like this giant awesome gun, you're like, I remember that from my childhood. Yeah. It's so cool. And then all of a sudden, you just see like installation piping and tubing. You're like, oh, I could buy that at Home Depot it's and make the it. The Dragon Ball Z effect. It really yeah. is. Oh my god. Every episode or every episode I remember of Dragon Ball Z looks awesome and like very clear in my head. Mm -hmm. But if I rewatch it now, I'm like, holy fucking. No. Yeah, yeah, I know, like, the, like, this the first animation episodes. is just like all awful. We yeah. always skip the Raditz episodes, and then you skip the no, when no, it's when they get to Namek. Watch you're Raditz, good to go. and then after that, you skip well, until Goku gets to Namek. Welcome to the Dragon Ball you, Z. You podcast. read up on the Wikipedia before <laughs> so you get who's to your Goku. favorite? <laughs> your favorite Krillin or Kien? I really like Kien. I, I, I see what you mean. Like Piccolo, I see what you mean. Like Piccolo. we don't want. I mean, I love practical effects. You know, yeah. horror, sci-fi. I mean, I love that the new Alien film has a lot of practical effects. It they does, like a sets. lot of practical and effects. Even though H.R. Geiger is still not, he's, he you know, passed away a couple of years ago. Um, they still kind of get that feel, and I think that's really cool. Um, I mean, but how much more do you, guys, do you no, really uh, need to design? I went to the H.R. Geiger Museum. Whoa! Was, it was very interesting. I got to see a lot of stuff. So I got the feel for what it is. <laughs> I bet so you it's, did. It's kind of cool. Yeah, really feel for it. Um, phallic references. Um, Dude, yeah, that. That picture is okay. Is I love, dick. yeah, I, I yeah. love a xenomorph, but it is clearly. No, I, I, but I wouldn't say a uncircumcised. When penis. I see a xenomorph in the movie, I'm not saying like that's a dickhead. But when the picture it's like the it is your eyes. a dickhead. Yeah, you're like, oh now. Do you have it in your room? I need to bring I, it. I do have it in my room. <laughs> No, it's not framed. Wait, I don't know. It's not framed. No, it's not framed. It's not framed. It's not framed. Folks, we'll have to show you next time on our next podcast. Wait, I don't live it here. would be more incentive what? to watch the video. Maybe we should do a whole I, segment on that. Video. Like, AJ sits over there, and we just use pointers. Well, like, it's, like Kurt said, we'll, we what? actually are going to have a video of me putting those out. So, you'll see. I wasn't able oh, to we'll film Oh, we'll get to see AJ's, we'll get my, see AJ's adventures? adventures? But, like, the end of the head is, like, a clear dickhead, too. But when we went to WonderCon, you saw it. They had a skeleton of a xenomorph. It looked like a penis. It literally looks like a penis. Like yeah, it looks like a looks walrus. Like, like fucking like yeah. like oh my god. And again, it's it's just the way those that creature is formed to look like a penis. How different does the skeleton look though? I feel like it's like an then exoskeleton. That picture I have? Than the picture For aliens in general, though. Well, again, every every What's alien or xenomorph What's the is different. Look between an alien skeleton and alien. Like there's Not a difference between skin. human and yeah. just skin. Well, because like, again, way back, like a, I feel like they have an like exoskeleton, a, and it has like a it's well, yeah, kind of shit. And that's the reason why, honestly, a lot of the aliens in the different movies are different because they're they're breeded 
breeded bred, bred, bred with different species so that's why everyone's different you know they're, they're not always the same consistent ones so the ones you know from the first alien and aliens are the black classic black ones i, I can't trust whatever you say anymore you no, 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 no this, 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 is, this is real yes I, i'm the king of bullshit i'm also the king of real uh, him and i watched husband. it yesterday there's a there's a um a half hour special on hbo for mm. alien covenant and it's really they, good actually they kind of talk about that like really scott designing the all the different type of species of xenomorph at the beginning of its stages that's evolution as a xenomorph yeah it's trying to find it that's what i think is going to be cool about coming i think what they're going to do is they're going to try to make it um kind of like this is the evolution of the xenomorph it's yeah a, it's a rapid evolution of how it's because it, it's trying to survive so i think that we're going to see a thought bunch it was a of different... prequel it is a prequel it, it's so after pro the, okay that's how we get the queen in, in the end and honestly and that's, that's the, the problem that. with a lot of trailers it's like they just want to show you the effects but they don't want to give you anything about the story like i had to, we had to watch this hbo first look to really get like the gist of the story now it's it's about like the story is and i haven't seen that though what's the story the story is they're going to colonize a like a planet right and yes. they have a bunch of couples go to a planet to recolonize it yeah and it's okay. the same planet from the crash landing ship pretty sure i've told you all this so no, you think I you're still no, I would, yeah we, we watched trailer. it one night it is one, it, okay that's in one of the trailers to be fair i didn't get get that the first time it was like the sixth time i've watched the trailer and I'm like now i'm finally but that's attention. how you know you're watching a ridley scott movie you gotta watch it, so even the trailer six yeah. times to fully understand even it, after i left slightly. the theater in yeah. thelma and louise i was still <laughs> just like <laughs> what did i watch did they am, die am i still I me should i go jump off of a cliff like what was it with that part with the predator coming i mean the alien coming out yeah i it's weird. It's like, yeah. No, let's stick, let's stick. Let's stick with Predator. Really connected. Thelma yeah. and Louise versus the Predator. Oh, it's, like, soon. it's like the ghost in Two Men's and a Baby. It's not really there, but why yeah. is it there? But again, if I win the lottery, if, we are making Thelma Louise versus if Predator. If one director had to fuse their two separate film identities, it would definitely have to be that. Thelma, we, we gotta, gotta go this way. I think the Predator's <laughs> over there. No, I don't think so, Louise. <laughs> Thelma, <laughs> Louise. <laughs> that was awful. Predator in Brazil. It was supposed to be like. <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> past my <laughs> shitty Predator impersonation. Um, uh, other trailers came out this like recently, and I don't think we've had a chance to talk about them. What uh, ones? Okay, uh, okay, what ones that are worth comment? commenting. I saw a lot of Cars what? Three and Trans. I saw a lot of Cars Three, Transformers, and I saw the Mummy show up. Is that what? You well, I was gonna say like Dark, Dark Tower. Tower. Like oh, honestly, we like got oh, our yeah, first. About that. Okay, yeah, we got our first Dark, Dark Tower yeah, trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah like two weeks ago and the movie comes out in three months now again they usually don't do that usually we get a trailer like a year in advance it's not it comes out in three months it comes out, it comes well, out in august like, that's scary. I mean, it's not on disney or anything so. that's scary no but it's just odd like well it's been in production for a while a while a while, a while. like I, it's been like if, when, okay what my Fox? opinion of it okay from the from super, what, super disappointed you both have seen the trailer horribly disappointed yeah i saw the trailer it's, so it's disappointed why are you disappointed I don't think it's going to be a good film at all. It does. It looks like a made-for-TV sci-fi movie. It doesn't look like. I don't know. I mean, I'm not super familiar with the Dark Tower story, but like, it Me still doesn't. But even, I've been wanting to read them. Even not being familiar with it, there's nowhere. This looks like Assassin's Creed, but Stephen King with fucking yeah. like, guns how you and knew, shit. And I knew the Assassin's Creed story that they were kind of trying to convey. I, I have a relation to it. But this, I have no relation to it, and I felt the exact same as I did as when they released the Assassin's Creed trailer. Like, I felt like they're no, they're not going to be anywhere close to the source material, and if they are, it's going to be super weird and cheesy, and nobody's going to get it because it's trying to be too close to what it is. And like, well, again, I love this... Matthew McConaughey and it, it, Idris Elba, isn't it? Yes, yes Idris Elba plays the gunslinger. Both, I love those two actors, but I, I don't think that they're going to be enough to carry the film. It's going to be like Cowboys and Aliens. Well, here's yeah. my thing about the film. You asked him, like, what is a character you... But, like, it doesn't mean anything if it's a good or a bad movie, because I don't really... I, I haven't read the Dark Tower yeah. series. I haven't... I've read a little bit of the first comic book, but that is to the extent I know of the series, and it, I can, I, it's, I'm not yeah. going to lose any sleep at night if it's yeah. good or bad. Yeah, very true. So, that's, true. that's it. However, I would say the trailer was very, very lackluster. Ooh, if I were super. to re-edit that trailer and take out all of the shots of him reloading, reloading his revolver, like, in a cool way... You would have the one. Oh, that was yeah. cool, very, though. very, very boring trailer it was that yeah. was probably the coolest That's part of the exactly trailer what I was there's a lot too. of red flags in the movie yeah i will go see it i'm excited for it i like the idea of it yeah it's cool but i real i like i i'm gonna go into it not really caring if it's good or not yeah it looks like a i mean maybe the story is like that but it just really reminds me of like a awkward constantine 
like yeah. the whole like oh, yeah. dimensions and stuff like i just i don't know and oh this guy's really also, hasn't directed I have a really anything big problem. Yeah, and, yeah and that's another thing too that i was going to bring up is the director is like he's, he's more of a writer than a director that's but also a big red flag yeah i mean they, they take chances lately I, I i commend hollywood for doing and that. also another thing i really hate fucking too is like constant like it looks like the movie is going to take place at night like the whole goddamn oh, time God. Dude, I, hate I hate fucking that. dark I hate movies i hate cgi in the night i hate just movies just all in the night. i i like i like movies that have like tonality to them them. I like seeing yeah. like this is this part of the movie and it's like very vibrant and colorful and you go to the next part of the movie fast forward 20 minutes more and it's more vibrant the movie. I'm just gonna mention this one time we're gonna save it for the Guardians review but that's why I like Guardians I feel like it's a very color trip and I very oh, yeah. love that each Dude. each spot had a color different I if you were to take like a still from the movie too. it would have a it would get, listen an emotion and like a tone and like a kind of okay. like a warmth yeah. or like a temperature. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of yeah. It, it, it like almost nurtured yeah. you to the scene, which yeah. is which is great cinematography in itself. And then, yeah, but then I'm saying like I hate movies like or like even video games like that. I feel like Call of Duty oh, yeah. is a very very falls prey to this a lot. It's like everything just having a flat like same color palette throughout the whole fucking movie, and like yeah. that's the main thing I'm worried about. Dark Tower. I don't want to see just oops oh, oh fuck. I don't want to see just like dark gray black yeah. contrast like shit like, unless it's david fincher yeah <laughs> well honestly i, I wish that they had somebody actually like with a, a name was actually directing well they're, they're, against the guy the, was the too gentleman. busy directing blade runner uh which we're, that is the next one we're gonna get into but hold on let me, let me just say this nice one. segue okay, thank you i actually didn't do that um, but i was however but actually yeah cool. we're gonna we're gonna get blade runner but uh, it's like a swish from over the shoulder okay so, so take, from okay. downtown so so take everything i said with about dark tower and then just take out dark tower and just put blade runner in there now and i could just have let me let me say my dark know, my last dark tower okay, go on with the dark tower so i i don't know where i am i i love westerns i love shooting them up movies i love like crazy gun effects but it's it's still like this is a seven part epic like oh really not yeah, joking it's like a huge and, I and aware for of that. F real fans of the book the ending is one of the worst i've heard is one of the worst endings oh, yeah. because you you is you read seven fucking books of these two guys and the last book is a big fuck you to the writers from stephen king now again i've never read them but every person i've ever met who's read all seven dark towers say the same thing oh my god and i'm like why would you ever want to do that why would you make it a movie like why like oh if why would i want to go see a movie that i'm gonna be pissed off when i leave you know they'll do a watchman they'll just alter the ending just a little bit just a little bit oh no that's no they're never going to do the same story though no, no. Yeah, not for anything ever. Saying. They gotta sell both aspects of the thing. Because yeah. honestly, that's, seven that's movies like Walking is Dead. like, oh it's like they're not gonna do the same Walking Dead comic book movie series. They gotta do comic separate, series, so right? you have to buy both. This yeah. isn't Resident Evil. They can't do that yeah. shit. Like, they're capitalizing on you, my friend. No, honestly, they, you. They, they're they done making Resident Evil movies. Okay, like remakes and sequels and oh, whatnot. Thank God it was called the final chapter. But yeah. that, the other one, there was another one called the final one too before. Yeah. <laughs> the next one's gonna be called Resident Evil. Psych. Final retribution. <laughs> Perfect. So moving on to uh, another trailer that all that was probably released during the same amount of time was Blade Runner. Well, a monkey yeah. movie. No, 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 no. Uh, we're going to get on to our hour-long discussion of the Emoji Movie yeah. in a minute. Oh, okay. G.J. Miller can't wait. He is, Blade Runner. Go. Blade Runner. We're losing people. So as, as, as a big sci-fi fan, uh, this was definitely one of the first movies that I was like, this is stupid. It, as, a young, as, as a young person before i gained my like knowledge and love for for movies now because this is the first oh, this is the first time like oh they're robots no they're not they're they are robots but they're just people they're just robots with skin over them yes just let me finish and that that from like watching star wars from watching star wars it's like the robots we grew up with and then i watched my dad's like oh, watch blade runner it has like robots and it's like cool what's my comment on the his instagram post where you're kind of saying too what it's like i we grew up with star wars yeah yeah and i'm like i go and think i'm gonna see a bunch of movies about robots yeah. but it's like no it's like this huge like thriller feels like you're like, reading a book yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> but it, it again it is one of the greatest sci-fi movies ever well, ever well, done i'm not bashing on it what i'm trying to convey is that we were too young to appreciate appreciate it, it. yes go. save that now the second one's coming out i was actually really i i jared leto like he was i was actually really i was like i want to see more about his character because i was actually excited i was worried after joker and you all know hopefully know my yeah, thoughts about joker even the description they gave for jared leto's character i was like oh 
oh my god this sounds like he's just like still a stuck in the joker mind they're like oh my god he was joker let's make the character like the joker yeah but no. like, I, like that's how he got the role or whatever but when the new trailer that came out that like kind of showed his character he's more of like this he, he's he like is. the creator he's, he's of literally the new they said he's a nurturing uh almost father figure to them. Which he's just going to turn all of the replicants against. Yes, that's that's probably what's going to happen. He's going to have yeah, them all against. Yeah, he's building them by himself. It's kind of like spoilers. Um. Oh wait. Oh, you haven't seen it, so I won't say it. But you do. You, know what do you know about. the big spoiler at the end of what? Of Blade Runner. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, what, what is I mean, it? I, I feel. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I feel. Yeah, that's I, I can't say it like off the top of my head, but if someone were to tell me, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. care though. Yeah. I I'm I well, love Blade Runner though. Blade Runner is in my top five. Like, solid solid films it's, it's one of those movies that, that puts I, harrison ford into like you, you forget that he was on so, solo and you're like blown away here's my question based off of that movie. so yeah i know you might enjoy the movie and i have faith in the director because he's been very consistent as mm -hmm. of lately do you think that you aside do you think this movie can survive in the movie culture and movie like mainstream media in the sequel that world we that we live in but, like okay what i'm saying is People might see Blade Runner and see Harrison Ford and think the kind of same thing that we thought. Star Wars? Star Wars, or this is going to be an action-packed blockbuster. Oh, it's going to be action-packed. Let's say if it goes either way, like, if it's an action-packed blockbuster, are you going to be upset? Are you going to be bummed? No. So you want more story-driven or action? Is, is that what you're saying? What I'm saying, well, either way. Either, okay. either hypothetical way it could go. I'm saying, let's say hypothetical book, the, the, the more, like, story, dialogue-driven... Um, film noir in the future that the original Blade Runner was, this one is. Now, is that good for the movie? Do you think people are going to care enough to sit through a movie or want to go see a movie like that? Unfortunately, no. Yeah. That's that's my honest opinion. That's what Something happens like to most me, movies. I love, I love the long story. I love the story that's not given. Like, like I you love the movie Drive. I that <laughs> Christopher Wayne Redford 40. is my literally he's my <laughs> oh, no. favorite director. He's my favorite really. Director. I love Valhalla Rising. Films. Twenty minutes of no talking. That is a great film. That is so never seen fun it. Fun fact about that director. It's that so director, weird. There's always a group of people. Not group. The majority of the people. I say a lot of people. They <laughs> love. They that love guy. like that style. Like I love. Hit that with the guy. Who's I the love name? this. Like Stanley Kubrick's like that. Yeah. Stanley Paul Kubrick, Thomas Anderson. There will be blood. There's fucking no talking for the first twenty. But minutes. it is a go that is but, uh, an yes, amazing movie. Yes. I yes. That, oh, it's that, about what's happening. Uh, Wending Refn is colorblind, so his movies when he shoots them, he has to shoot them in high resolution, like vibrant colors, so he can actually see what he's seeing. So mm. like that's why his movies are so artistically like done because he has he literally has to see it a, a specific way. So I, I love wouldn't get film. that from seeing his movies, though. But but like Drive, you think about that Neon Demon that just came out, very like yeah, Drive is a lot of poster. Though. Honestly, yeah. Drive is a lot of like huge like color moment, like colorful yeah. moments. Like you think it's, it's talking about, yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's like this I the like one that, main scene at the end like where he's the warmth. Yeah, the, like the, it's like where he's driving. It's like you get the whole warmth of like the scenery around him and that and then the blue or like the silver of his car looks so good, man. Color, everything that's picked. So when a director like really gets specific and gets really down to the nitty gritty and is like, this is why this jacket looks like this. This is why oh, yeah. this. The tan with the gold That's why scorpion. there's this crack right here because of in this past history. Blade Runner was like that. Everything had a reason you know for everything. It's kind of funny that you say that too because I kind of had that same way along with Drive that I had with Blade Runner. I was kind of more expecting a very thriller solid movie but oh. i got a lot of dialogue see because with me I, I, I don't mind I hate that i'm so simple like that well because because people like, I oh my god drive but i didn't enjoy it as much as like a lot of the other people who did oh, yeah, really yeah. Enjoy. gorgeous because well, people like oh my god drives like this action movie i'm like it's really not like the only action part is like the, the, the end, is the beginning yeah in, in the end, end. and yeah. then the there's that thing is the, the, sweet oh well the first scenes fuck they're all in the strip club bro that's fucking when he goes the freaking hammer yeah and then there's a little t right there yeah it's the hammer oh there's actually a lot of good scenes. I remember uh, we went to Comic-Con one year. We thought we were going into some kind of panel. I forgot exactly what it was. We saw Prometheus, I think, and we also saw Drive. Yeah, and we, they, they were there. And they previewed a clip from Drive, yeah. the elevator scene, and that, oh. like, was like, fuck, that, that scene... Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Such like such a good suspenseful scene. Scene that like no talking, but dude, it's just so like well. excuse me. Yeah, but it gives you that emotion, and I think that's kind of like just what Blade Runner does for me. I think the build up, like Stanley Kubrick, the, just like the build up, it really like it chills you to the bone until you're like, I'm there. And I think, it, unfortunately, like you were saying though, it. I I don't think that the new Blade Runner is gonna do as well as it really should do. 
because it's not going to chill you to the bone. So, I mean, certain films are doing that for people. What do you, you pass a note to the <laughs> no, class? No, like, no. Do you want me to read it to the rest of the class I, for that we, we got to the point where I wanted to also see his notes, too. Um, so, yeah. So, I think that, unfortunately, yeah, Kurt, you're right. I don't think that because, I mean, I'll love it. Other people that love film I and think like that build up will love it. Yeah. But unfortunately, I don't think that in the mass public, like, I don't think it's the greatest movie to put out. I don't think that's why it's not a needed sequel. And I think that because of that, there's there's, there's going to be misguided uh, uh, passion. Yeah. I think either it. way is going to not end it. well for it. Yeah. Either way, it's going to stick true to his roots and it's going to fail with the audience or it's going to bastardize it and. Yeah. Blow it up, its like back Michael on the Bage. original yeah. audience. Yeah, I don't I mean, think. I mean, from the trailer, like there's like huge like dust, like cloud scenes where it's like that tan, like that orange. So I think like, for I feel Greg, like it's gonna be the latter. Like right? I didn't, I yeah. did, I did, I definitely did not grow up in that era. But I'm sure there was the debate between like the there was like Star Wars and there was Blade Runner, and the kids who like like Star Wars were like simple people, and like I like Blade Runner. It's oh, more no. like. Story based. I didn't get into Blade Runner until I was older. No, yeah, I'm not so, saying that you were like that. Yeah, but I was like, so unfortunately. Yeah, I, I didn't like, see when I was. A, I didn't see when yeah. I was a kid. I was definitely a Star Wars kid for sure. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear me. So so Star Wars or Star Trek. <laughs> I'm gonna go over here with my lunchables. <laughs> I'm gonna read <laughs> movie, movie the book. <laughs> it's my favorite book. book. <laughs> movie oh, the no, book. Sorry. The book. The movie. Oh god. Based off the book. That's based off the movie. Based off the TV show. Swish. Swish. And honestly, like um, nowadays, it it's like you know we were having this discussion earlier. Like no nobody a transition uh, can have original uh, original ideas anymore. It feels like and honestly, like, don't even get me started on it, that. Uh, and, and so it's like it's 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 hard to like get people to like oh I I like this but it's like is it a remake? Is it a fucking just reboot? What is it? It's, so it's like uh, one thing that's coming out soon is. Um, I know you guys not, might not be a fan of it, but we like the actor. The redoing Hellboy. Okay, now uh, hold on, hold on. Okay, now they Ron Perlman. We love Ron Perlman. He's been trying for like to, Kurt hates Ron. Perlman. Kurt, Kurt, Kurt hates most people. He's a no, cheap fucking actor. He'll do anything. Exactly. Hey, what's up, Perlman? Perlman. You want to suck that? my dick? Okay, okay. Hold, hold, hold on. Okay, we do not want to get sued by Ron Perlman and his publishers. I'm sorry. No matter how good he is at his job or that job. Anyway, so uh, I don't know about you, but I, I'm going to be bummed not seeing Ron Perlman as Hellboy, but I'm actually really excited to see uh, Hopper as fucking Hellboy. Because if you really look at his face, yeah, 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 yeah. If, you, if you look at his face, he actually things, really looks proportional to Hellboy. And, and he's taller yeah. than Ron Perlman. I believe so. Thank you to Boss Logic, <laughs> by the way. What? Shout, no, shout out to Perlman Boss Logic. Is a giant. Shout out. You want to do it? Yeah. Let's see. Okay. I'm Ron Perlman. I don't, I'm too lazy. I don't want to look what? up Hopper's height. You, you look, look up Ron Perlman, I'll look up Hopper. Oh, wait. My phone he's, has been fucked up lately. He's pretty look big. Up, look up uh, Ron Perlman's height for me. Okay. Be a darling and look up Ron Perlman's height for me. So, folks, let me do this. So, so, don't you feel special when you say a sentence that no one has ever said in their life before? I, I, always, I, I, I try to do that all the time at work, and people are like, what the fuck? So, I'm looking up Ron Perlman? Ron Perlman height. Google that. Um, <laughs> but okay, but I, I, it's going to be cool to see it. Hopefully, it's like... Are they gonna do the first story, which was the first movie? But does it matter? Does it Hopper? matter? Or, like, why? Why do you care? Does it what? like? I do. I actually really like the Hellboy movies. I just want oh, it to be like good. Like, but those really. are disconnected. Uh, I think that it's Hellboy I, and the Hell. The, sorry, so let me say this one thing. No, for Hellboy, sure. Hellboy, the new one, and has a closer relationship to the actual Hellboy comic than it has a yes. relationship to Hellboy. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. What you got? Hopper. Did you see? I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess six four. Hopper? Yeah. I'm 6'3". I know. I have, I've never stood beside Hopper. Whoa. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Oh, wait. I've seen him on TV. Wait, wait. Roman's 6'3"? No, no. I'm 6'3". Okay. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Okay, how, how tall? And you're just like 6'2". Okay. But yeah, I'm going to Yeah, so really welcome to the height podcast where we talk about height. <laughs> how tall is Ron Perlman? 6'6". 6'6". Six, 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 six. No, Ron Perlman's 6'6". Oh, wait, David, no, you have a smug look on your face right now. He David Harbour, yeah. who plays Harper, Hopper. I know he's pretty tall, though. Is six two and three quarters. Ooh, beats him by an inch six, and a three two, quarters. Three quarters. That's like a guy who's like, hey, it's my half birthday. I'm three quarters tall. And he's younger and he's more. I think he's a little bit more. But height means nothing. He's Tom jacked Cruise, though. Come on, he's like tiny and Tom Cruise is five three. One, one of my favorite stories like is when they filmed yeah, when six, they filmed the Last yeah. Samurai. Anytime because Ken Watanabe yes, is six two. Anytime they had to film a scene with the two of them, they had to dig a trench so Ken Watanabe could walk through the trench and be the yeah. same height as and fucking Tom, Tom Cruise. Yeah, and <laughs> like, seriously, or the guy that was a guy's job for a week. I gotta dig a trench. I gotta dig the the baby trench because Tom Cruise is a fucking baby. 
Yeah. And I heard when they were standing, he would stand on a box. Yeah. 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 Apple box. So yeah. bad. But um, <laughs> an apple box is very specific. That's yeah. actually that's the term. That's but, it, no. I'm excited to see it. I think that it will be really cool. Uh, I heard the reason why they couldn't do it was purely because um, they had to have some sort of rights, and it was too expensive. Sure. Oh, I bet. It's, yeah. it's too, too. It was too expensive to do a third one, and it was cheaper to do to a reboot. To do a, a full reboot, reboot, and they were able to do it rated R. And it's confirmed. It's it's yeah. happening. The Mike Maganolo, who's the, yeah, the writer just, artist of the series, all my comments I made on the Shop for Shot Instagram. Be sure to check it out. Thank uh, you. But it was Blade Runner comment, and then we talked about yeah. Hellboy. And what yeah. was sorry the thing you were just talking about? I made a that I was on. just talking about, or I forgot why I lost it. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> but it was Hellboy. Oh. I t I commented on one well, last scene, we, we're, and then we can get off our our, our hour long discussion of Hellboy. Stupid. Uh, Stupid. One of my favorite parts about the first set is Doug Jones as Abe Sapien. So I really hope Doug Jones comes back. He was in the first two, so I hope he comes back for the other two. I don't think he will. He might not. I mean, they'll probably get uh, Michael Fassbender to do it if anything. You know, really? Doug really? Jones is cheaper than Michael Fass. Michael Fassbender is like a a, a lead star. Oh, he did like that's if it's a passion project. Like that's like that's like Johnny Depp in the Lone Ranger. Like your lead star is the fucking sidekick. Like using Lone Ranger as an argument in any shape or form. I, I'm saying I'm saying like if if fucking Michael Fassbender is the Abe Sapien to David Harbour's Hellboy. Oh, I got it now. I'm so sorry. I remembered what I was talking about. Oh, here it comes. Yeah, I got it now. I... <laughs> sorry, sorry, folks. Stupid. Re -re 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 -re. Redeem myself. Let's rewind. <laughs> All right, we're back. We're talking about my Instagram comments. I was oh, saying gotcha. the new, we're in a new shitty Robert renaissance uh, circa, <laughs> yeah. circa 2004 to 2006 with like shitty superhero movies. Yeah. Where now the standard Whoa. is going to be like shitty rated R superhero movies. They're just buying them up. Buy whatever you can now. Honestly, like, yeah. Gonna, see, remember that shitty super movie that was PG-13 back then? No, no, no. We're going to reboot it. Like, like the kids are loving the rated R. They there's going to be a reboot of the League coming out yeah. soon, probably. Yeah, like, oh, I I'm, I'm, not, I'm not calling it. I'm What's saying, I mean, I mean, I'm calling it. I would say it. Daredevil, but that's already been done. Hulk the Daredevil show. Like, it's not going to be a movie. They'll redo maybe Blade. Blade was the original, man. Fuck, man. Blade Dude, is like, a solid. I want to say this right now. No Blade, no nothing. No, what do you mean? Blade saved it all. The man. apocalypse, you mean? Well, honestly, no like from the vampires. <laughs> if if you think about Blade, really did true because story. it came out. Came out. Not know that. No, dude, I'm so blind. I'm just another Deacon sheep. Frost. He's a real dude. He was. A real he dude. is. He's a real dude in the books. Then just some fucking guy that made it for the movie. Well, yeah. Uh, but but it's funny. Like, Blade was before X Men. It was before fucking Spider Man. Like, suck their uh, not terrible. Uh, Deadpool's dick. Be like, oh, oh my god, it was the first. Like, dude, have you ever heard it, of Blade? Have you Blade. seen the original Blade, dude? Blade what literally says I'm Marvel before I the movie. We saw that movie. When we were in like the third with our grade. grandfather. Yeah, and he oh was, my god, he was oh my god. cracking up the whole movie. He loved it. Oh like, my god. When, when he when they got the OG. part where like he like had these the syringes were like sticking them in their faces and they're like <laughs> were like filling up with blood and like exploding. He was just like fat kid gets stung by. Up in the movie theater, and like I was like maybe ten. Oh shit! <laughs> and, then, and then they all just started exploding and shit. Not even ten. That came out like ninety-seven. Look it up right now. Sorry, we're gonna do another phone yeah, search, did. but no, I, I'm not gonna say ninety-seven. Ninety-eight. Um, I was eight years old. Uh, but it was funny because I vividly remember seeing Blade I, yeah. One in the theaters, Chucky. and like Ch the Chucky. Chucky. The Chucky. Chucky. I was gonna say that. Oh my god! Like, like that was like, I don't want to watch this. Because yeah. like, I used to be it fucking terrified of Chucky, Chucky like, like as a guy who collects toys and all that shit. You know. Um, my my cousin had a Chucky doll. It scared the crap out of me. Uh, very close. Very close. What, what year? Ninety nine. It is ninety eight. Yes. Yes. It's August twenty first, nineteen ninety eight. So you were actually super close. You said ninety nine. I said ninety seven, then I said ninety eight. Oh, Classic. Okay. Hey, came out in August. I was eight years old when I saw that. Most, Most like somewhat good, good movies come out in August. Even you know, these came out pretty early too. Weird. Guardians of the Galaxy weird. one came out in August. Mm -hmm. So just you know, Suicide, Suicide Squad, Squad came out in August. Came out in August. What? Wait, what came out in August? Suicide Squad. Okay. And it's coming soon! Suicide, Suicide Squad, Squad 2! Oh my god, don't even... So, so moving on from the shitty squad of Suicide that makes me want to kill myself. Um, uh, one thing I've, I saw... Low bar. Low bar. <laughs> suicide. Suicide, <laughs> see? Oh, the Come Suicide on, Podcast. That bad. Welcome to the Suicide <laughs> Podcast where we talk about all things Suicide Squad and... It got dark really fast. <laughs> So let's brighten this up a bit. Look how goth I am. Um, okay, so one thing I saw uh, on the interweb that, you know, that on my many... The internet. On the internet. The YouTube, on, on the YouTubes. On, uh, I got home from the Nordstrom's. Uh, after I was done sending From the Ross and the Marshalls. Using my fidget spinner. I really my no. I want one of the fidget boxes. boxes. I don't know why. I don't want one of the spinners. I want a fidget box. Bo oh, like yeah. Because I feel like it would help with my nail box. Morgan was talking about that. Yeah. 
Uh, this Amen. That awesome, though. Is that bad? I really want to get one. Did you see, like, the I crazy, heard, like, homeless guy, that. like... I feel like that's the new hoverboard. That, oh, no, yeah, it's the new fad, video. dude. It's, like, the new fad. Oh, it's, yeah, it's a new fad. <laughs> yeah, there Molly's had to, like, confiscate, like, a bunch of... Do you guys remember Astrojax? <laughs> But, it's but, a new tech deck. But, but in my defense, when I was a kid, I ate tech all tech. that shit up. I ate tech decks up. Yo-yos. But there's also the, the Astro Jacks. What's that? <laughs> this is the dumbest one ever. It's I remember called Jacks. Astro Jacks. <laughs> and they were like these they three, were three balls, balls on, on a, a string. Like a, on a string. And you would like do like tricks with them and you like flip them around. And, oh, like, it's like a Fushigi. They were like the new yo yo. But it's, uh, yeah. Or like, what's the, the devil sticks? I was going to say, yeah, those sticks. Devil oh, sticks? Why was it like, came out like the same time as that. Or remember like. You did the stick with the rope, and there was like the top. You oh, like, you guys remember the thing there? where it was like a baseball in between like two lines, and you would like battle each other in like the yard, and it was like filled with water balloons or something like that. And oh yeah, you what are you? Your side, that's it right. Would explode and like, you're wet. You're yeah, dead. Yeah, it would count down, and then <laughs> yeah, you and then really, it would, it's like a hot potato. Yeah, because it, it'd be and two, it would pop. It would be two strings in the center of a football, what an and as you pulled your arms apart, it would shoot the ball forward because yeah. the strings would be pulling apart like yeah, a zipper. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and then the other person would also like do that too. Okay. Here, here's one thing I vividly remember too. Like, like growing up, like super soakers. Like, if it wasn't that classic yellow and green one, you know, the classic yellow and green super soaker. If it was any other one, oh, it was it was shit, dude. I remember I had the one that we we went on this stupid fucking uh, retreat one time to this lake and it had a bunch of jellyfish in it and we had the shittiest time and dad bought me this awesome super soaker that had a water pack that you would connect oh, to yeah, the gun and then it would just be a constant flow yeah, but dude like, the wow, thing broke shit. within the first hour I had it yeah, but you all this little shit with it <laughs> I was actually filling with pee put up the fucking bipod and just going bam, 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 bam. Yeah. I've never tried that, okay? I've always wanted to... Sure. Hey, to... Super Soaker makes quality products, okay? Yeah. Do you have to pee in a bottle first, or do you pee right into the balloon? What are you talking about? A piss balloon? Yeah. Yeah. What's easier? I don't easier? think you would pee with such force to fill up a balloon, though. That's I mean, what I'm saying. Like, would I have to use a water like bottle? Flow it's over you. time. You'd have to pee in a... <laughs> super so Soaker. You... <laughs> So we're going to piss into Super Soaker. We're having this conversation. We're going to piss into Super Soaker. (laughs) Folks, while we figure out this this heated discussion of whether or not a wide I thought we were going to talk about Call of Duty. Now we're talking about pissing in balloons. (laughs) So, water balloons. Speaking speaking of water balloons. I was on this podcast for Call of Duty and Call of Duty only. Do you want to talk about Call of Duty? Yeah, we'd love to talk about Call of Duty. So tell me. So welcome to Kurt's Game Corner. Welcome to the Game Corner with Kurt Kurt? featuring Kurt. Kurt Kurt. Kurt's Game Corner. Kurt, say hi to the fans, Uh, Kurt. So Call of Duty has now released a new trailer. I don't Uh know if you guys have all seen it. Yeah. Um, Just to give you some perspective, Call of Duty has been out, like, I think it's like the number 13, I think. Something like that. It's been out for at least 20 years. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, that however, yeah, it's just been out for a long time. And I don't know how many of our viewers or how many of you guys keep up with what is Call of Duty, but mm. lately it's been progressing more future. Yeah. Constantly going into the future. They did, uh, they, it all, Call of Duty blew up, came onto the scene with Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Four Modern not, Warfare. Not, right? Call of Duty 4 Modern, Modern, Modern Warfare. Yeah. And then from there, from that's when they became it, their own it, Modern it Warfare. It set the standard for multiplayer games that has affected PvP. so many other things, like PvP. I mean, it's Halo, Kill but streaks, this really did. Like, all that shit, like, like loadouts, all that kind of, it set the standard for that. And then after that, um, I believe it was Black Ops. Did we get loadouts from that oh, sorry. too? Yeah, it was like it was like Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare Two, and then it was Black Ops. Then it was Modern yeah. Warfare Three, and then just they've been, slowly, yeah, so they've been slowly. Yeah, so they've been slowly. The first step happened with Black Ops Two, where they progressed into the future, and pretty much ever since then they've had Black Ops Three, they've had uh, Advanced Warfighter, they've had Infinity War, uh, War, well, oh. Infinite Infinite Warfare. Sorry, I always there confuse that with Infinity Ward. But yeah. even more, Coming more getting school. away from the roots and going into the futuristic aspect of it, where not only they've changed the original multiplayer of Call of Duty uh, Four Modern Warfare, yeah, um, they've just like changed it completely. Kind of, mm-hmm. they have. Uh, there's a there's there's two aspects to Call of Duty. There's the kill streaks, and there is well, I guess three. Let's say the 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 kill streaks, the Burst. weapon loadouts, and yeah, and like the perks. Mm. Um, those are the three things that have defined Call of Duty. However, they've They've restricted like kill streaks a little bit, and they have 
made an emphasis on like jetpacks and riding on walls and people it's gone away from its roots like titanfall. for sure it literally is like titanfall it is like titanfall and unfortunately titanfall came out right before advanced warfare and it was like they're just copying them yeah. like sure no, no, no 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 came no came into existence at around the same time i mean a lot of games but had fucking running on the walls before now that. call of duty is coming out they're going back to the roots going to world war ii um battlefield one um has right. I don't know. Okay. People are saying that if, Battlefield 1 has set the bar. If, it's not... Hold on. Let me, let me finish. Okay. Let me finish my point and I'll go to you. People want to say like, oh, Battlefield 1 made them do this way. Like, it's, it doesn't take that long to make it... Like, that short of a time to make a game. Okay. They've probably been in production for at least three years. And yeah. They've made that decision before they even knew Battle, Battlefield 1 was um, existing. Yeah. So it's like I don't think that they made their they they've ran the well dry on futurists. They've had like four futuristic like each time they'll go further and further into the future and they can only go so far until they rewind backwards. Yeah, and the inside aspect of that is you're absolutely right because I did hear that uh Activision and everything uh, Call of Duty like that kind of area w their stocks and their buy and buying and everything of like that there uh was way less than even like Destiny. Yeah. Uh, so I think it was like you said. It. I think they totally were trying to do that, and it is in World War One. If it was World War One, yeah, I'd be like, oh shit, yeah. But I think they're just trying to. Everyone's trying to figure out the best way to keep their company going, and I think that a lot of companies are like, why don't we just go back to the roots? Yeah. What we're known for, and Battlefield luckily well, went okay. way yeah. back and did something completely different, but at the same time doing something very well, relative. And I think that's why you're saying they set the bar. If you really remember back to Call of Duty 1, it was a World War 1 or World War 2. I, I'm not... World War 2. It was World War 2. It was like Medal of Honor. Yeah. But again, it, 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 yeah. like, it first came Medal of Honor, and that was huge. And then Call of Duty outdid Medal of Honor. And now Battlefield, out like Battlefield 1, really outdid Call of Duty for a while because it got that back to that old realistic gameplay well they did I something love. well they did something ballsy and they did it right yes yeah and, and that's, that's what what they're, they're trying to do is hopefully that it, it will work so, i get what you're saying for sure yeah i think it is, is it world war two or world I, war one I, I, I think world war two right yeah world war two yeah yeah okay. the, the new call of duty the new okay. call of duty so yeah. they, they started with boots on the ground they tried to in some way transform their game type their multiplayer game yeah they're like okay we'll give you jetpacks and you can run on walls that was to the extent of it. Mm -hmm. That is run dry, and I think they're doing kind of quote unquote faux like uh, game development, like game progression. When they're like, okay, we really don't need to revamp the multiplayer engine or how you play or the game time yeah. style. Style, mm -hmm. we're just going to go back to our roots, and that's going to be good enough. Yeah, which is I think is a and solid campaign. They should starting, though. They're Honestly, they should. A faux, faux, like oh, this is this is a new gameplay mode. When I think Battlefield One kind of also got back to the roots of the original battlefield games yeah. however i think yes. they did it in a nice way where there was it was very yeah. very real in depth with oh. the engine they have yeah. i think the engine from battlefield uh sorry battlefield one is extremely different and crazier and much more of a sandbox than battlefield uh the original battlefield i don't know 1942 or something like that mm. however call of duty i don't think is that much of a gap in like game play and game mechanics and game graphics game everything mm -hmm. yeah and honestly it's it's literally just it's like what all these fucking movies do it's, it's just gonna come right back around it's like like with x-files like oh x-files been off the air for so long it came back first season it was great it was like nothing changed they're rebooting, they're, they're rebooting, and they're rebooting call of duty like we're gonna get more new ones and like honestly i'm That's a good pun reboot boots on the ground now boots on the ground rebooting, rebooting the ground boots on the ground and i'm i'm excited you know it, it I just hope that yeah. it's it's yeah. different. Like, like that's, that's the problem with me in the campaigns. It's, it's just A to B to C. I, I want more. Sorry, I, I keep on talking about it, but I also feel like Call of Duty is such an easy thing to fucking shit on. Like such an easy thing. And I and I have always been a huge huge fan of Call of Duty. I've bought in every single Call of Duty that has ever came out. Okay. And, yes, yes. Um, I, I have I, I have I have gotten stale. Up. There's been a bad taste in my mouth like the last two Call of Duties. Oh yeah. And if it wasn't for this one, I if it was another future one, I probably wouldn't have bought it however i feel like people can easily shit on call of duty because it never changes like no one fucking shits on pokemon pokemon has been the exact same thing there's no skill trees there's oh, no don't get me started there's about no in-depth in leveling there's no really super depth to the actual gameplay of pokemon mm -hmm. it's the same you attack first you win it's yeah. nothing like that you don't want to use leer <gasps> you don't want to use growl Fuck that shit. Just attack, 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 attack. Instead of being on a mainland, However, you're going to be in four little islands. Really, Call of Duty has changed the, the multiplayer. It's gotten a bad rap, but I do see how it's changed. It's like Modern Warfare set one, set the bar for multiplayer. They had mm -hmm. kill streaks and all that shit. Yeah. 
Modern perks. Warfare 2 took it to ex extreme levels. There was a bunch more kill streaks. World at War, A bunch dude. more perks. Remember World at War? World at War was awesome because they added Love zombies. World at War. Uh, Black Ops did like a, like a pick 10 system. Yeah. Like it, they, they've been progressing it, the, the system. I think it's easy to show on, but I'm excited for it. I, I love zombies. However, zombies is only good when Treyarch does it, not when anyone else. We heard that they came out with like the giant like eight zombie games in one now. What? Yeah. I didn't hear that. Like we should get it. It's like fucking. Wait, is it really? Is yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a game it's, that you can pre-order that's, that's all eight zombies, zombies except, except there's one that's Alcatraz isn't on there, but you get all Oh the... no, that's my favorite one. Yeah, that's I, that's everybody's favorite one. one. Okay, so here's but here's my question to you though. I, yeah. uh, Tyler and I have not seen, or Butter and I have not seen the new trailer. No. So, oh sorry. Uh hitting the mic. Uh based off what you saw, where is your confidence level on hey we're getting back to the roots. It's going to be a solid game. I'm super stoked. Like moving it. from like, futuristic. Cause for, yeah, because for me, to old. you know what's funny? Nothing well, though. Just the fact that it is Call of Duty. Back to the root. It, just, yeah, just the fact that it is set in World War. Is II. there? But I'm saying, is there any confidence to you where you're like, okay, it looked like based on the gameplay? Because I hear they, I heard they released a half hour of gameplay. <laughs> oh, I didn't see any. Either. Okay, well, yeah. I heard that, so I thought you saw that, but um, or something like that, and and just based off what you've seen. Are you going to be like, I'm pre-ordering that? Or are you going to be like, I'm still okay. a little bit weary because of all the shit that's been out before? Because I okay. stopped playing after Black Ops. I will not pre-order it. I don't I, I, I don't like pre-ordering. I, I hate to shove that down people's throats. We got you. We'll close out soon. I don't like to shove it down people's throats, but like I don't need to pre-order. There's no need to pre-order. It's fine if you do. Don't care. Um, but the only thing that really has made me excited for it that it's going back to its roots funny thing is when i watched the trailer i was like this looks like battlefront one and i really enjoy battlefront oh, one really? i was really excited for that i love i that. don't give a shit about the single player i never really play the single player i play call of duty for the multiplayer aspect i think that's a lot of people even more so battlefront i play about i don't even touch battlefront's uh, uh, story mode i think i played uh, the, the last four call of duties no sorry three call of duties or two call of duties i've played maybe 50 percent of the story everything before that i played 100 percent over and over and over again. The last ones, I've just solely focused on multiplayer in the zombies mode. So I'm I'm excited. I'm hopeful. Okay. Um, I would really like to see uh, a different flavor to it. I want to see more. I don't want them to just go back to their Call of Duty roots where they're just, oh, we're just changing the game by putting the boots back on the ground. I want to see some aspect. They can't really do vehicles because that's not Call of Duty style. It's no, it's fast not. paced. It's yeah. quick. It's arcadey. It's a Battlefield theme. Battlefront really. has, not Battlefront. I mean, I guess Battlefront and Battlefield has that like strategy and team-based aspect to it call of duty you're just kind of by yourself it's arcadey it's quick it's it's just a quick like like you don't have to work yeah, as a team you can fucking just, just like everybody can just be on their own candy battlefront like if you sit down and play a match you're having like a full course meal you're playing a different thing but like yeah call of duty is just munching on like candy bars and different it's just sort. a fun game you yeah, can pick up and put halloween down. candy bag yeah. So, <laughs> so while while we wait eagerly for Call of Duty to come out and the other games to come out, um, I'm gonna ask you guys oh, yeah. my favorite question I always ask. Oh, 